photographer that Ben and I have chosen to study is Richard Sandler. Richard Sandler is a street photographer and documentary filmmaker who is still alive today. He is known for photographing the streets of New York City as well as making video documentaries of the crime that was on the rise. His main areas of focus of crime and drugs were Times Square, Harlem, and the East Village. One of his important quotes that correlate with the pictures that we have seen and are going to show today is, You are recording your time, says Sandler. You are looking for the trends. If you are in the streets, you see it. You see everything on the streets. To view Richard Sandler's photographs is to look into the soul of a broken New York. From the pages of his book, you can almost hear the rattle of subway cars, the tap of high heels on concrete, and the commotion of midtown rush hour. But if the city is the theater, it's only the people who take center stage. Going along with what he just said, we are also reminded of Sandler through Davidson, who also did pictures of the NYC and documented them. And just as Davidson, he wanted to create an atmosphere that resembled a film or a movie. Every picture that he has created or done, it's almost as if you are in there living the actual picture. The work that first enchanted him was that of Brazon. And I quote, it was the first tickle, says Sandler. Seeing these incredible put together pieces that get under your skin in ways that you can't understand. They get in through a door that you are not guarding. The work that I decided to choose for this video project was Bigotry by Richard Sandler. It's a man speaking on an anti-gay demonstration on 6th Avenue in New York City in 1989. It is kind of ironic for Richard Sandler to create this picture, but at the same time showing a much more deeper understanding and meaning behind this photo. It is almost as if you can actually feel yourself in the movement while this person is speaking against gay rights. You can almost place yourself in there wanting to either punch the person or actually cheering and voting. Going back to the photo and the title bigotry, literal meaning for bigotry includes or means intolerance towards those who hold different opinion of oneself and i believe in every picture richard sandler wanted to create kind of a distinct opinion or not a social norm but actually what is going against it and i believe that he was trying to create kind of a different way of thinking through his pictures and it really brings out the learning that we've learned in class about social documentary and instant vision because he includes social documentary in every one of his pictures kind of trying to portray a lesser evil and like the bigger evil in every picture that he has taken and as well as he kind of is doing a photo of it being candid. It also has a form of documentary which includes trying to draw and aim at the public's attention and trying to draw their attention into what's going on in today's issues and the social issues going on in that time. I believe he was really trying to portray the fact that maybe we don't know what it really is but through this picture we can see kind of a more aggressive point of view and how it should not be this way. I really believe that through this photo, he wanted to create kind of a sense of different opinion. And in this picture, which I fell in love with, I really feel that it draws my attention and it calls to something personal in my life, which is very meaningful. Having said that, I'm going to pass it to Ben. Something that interests me that Sandler seemed to photograph a lot were the subways of New York City. Subways already aren't the most enjoyable place to be. But this is especially the case during the 1980s in New York because they were noisy, covered with graffiti, and filled with strange people. Paul Thoreau, a journalist who toured the subway system for a week in 1981, said, The subway is frightful looking. It has paint and signatures all over its aged face and has been vandalized from end to end. It smells so hideous that you want to put a clothespin on your nose and it is so noisy that the sound actually hurts. He also says, No one speaks. Avoiding the stranger's gaze is what the subway passenger does best. Most sit bolt upright with fixed expressions, ready for anything. Pictured here is a work by Richard Sandler that I found really interested me, called Kids Asleep on Woman in Subway, taken in 1981. It appears to have elements of both straight photography and the social document. The image is in focus, except the woman toward the center of the photo. At first glance, it appears that the woman to the right of the children is their mother and that she is in the middle of slapping them for falling asleep on a stranger's shoulder. 
But now I'm realizing that the woman on the left appears to be a caretaker of theirs, and that the woman on the right is a stranger. I think this because of the way the girl is snuggled up against her. She seems as if she intended to fall asleep on the woman, rather than accidentally dozing off against her. Another thing that tells me this is the way that the other two children are leaned against the girl. They wouldn't just all three lean against a random stranger like that and fall asleep. I think the woman to the right, that I originally thought was their mother, is just trying to hide their faces when she realized there was a photo being taken of them. The social document aspect of this photo still shines through because children still have babysitters and fall asleep on long trips, and some people don't like being photographed and attempt to hide their faces. This along with the other images by Richard Sandler of the subway just go to show how far public transportation has come since then and that it has gotten safer and slightly more refined. You won't see Sandler on the street much anymore. He feels cell phones have robbed photographers of their subjects. There is nothing more boring, more non-descriptive and vacant than a person on a cell phone walking down the street. They seem to be out of the game, Sandler says. People are walking around in bubbles.